Hey guys, so today I'm working on the uh, P48 Chevy project. Uh, I'm looming and covering all of our wires, cutting them down to size. I'm going to be soldering, heat shrinking all the connections, and getting a, our harness built uh, to go into the engine and connect up under the dash. I've temporarily mounted the computer on a bracket uh, up under the dash. I'm going to have to build a nice sheet metal mount for it. Uh, I just couldn't find a decent spot to put that. Uh, that factory OEM bracket that that holds the computer so I made a temporary bracket out of some sheet metal and screwed it into the firewall until I can build a permanent bracket and weld it into the inside of the firewall so uh, computers in there I know my links now on uh, all of my harness and I've staggered my cuts uh, from you know from the shortest I could go to the longest I could go uh, and I'm staggering and I'm getting ready to solder all that stuff together, but I'm still covering wires right now um, I'm covering everything in cloth uh, wire loom cover. I Really like this stuff. I think it's going to look great in the engine bay and uh, You know give you give the motor a few style points better than convoluted tubing or covering it in electrical tape so uh, I'm using this this bitchin wire loom cover and uh, I've got it in uh, quarter inch and half inch sizes. Um, the, what I really like about this, one of the cool things about it is uh, it's expandable. You know, it's, it's a braid, uh, braided loom cover and it expands almost twice its size. So you can bundle a pretty good amount of wire in the half inch loom and have your loom nice and tight on the wires um, after you inch them through there. You have to inch them along through the through the cover but once you get it in there and pull it tight and then tape it at each end you got a really nice tight loom that looks clean looks factory I've, uh, I've got a few here that I've done these are the smaller pigtails that I've covered um, and I really like working with this stuff it's, uh, it's pretty great uh, one of the tips I'll give you in working with loom or pushing your wires through anything is uh, the mistake that I made today uh, is you don't want to strip any of your wires before you have to push them through this stuff uh, because it is cloth and it's braided so if if you have uh, copper strands on the end of a bare wire and you try to push it through here it's just not going to work so I had to clip off uh, the wire and tips that I had stripped so that I could fish them through here um, so that stuff's awesome I'm using uh, cloth loom tape on the ends to give it a, a nice finished factory type appearance um, and I think it's it's coming out great um, when you're laying out your harness and you're assembling it you're gonna have all different links for these pigtails you know every sensor is gonna have a little longer here a little shorter there you're gonna connect it in a different spot against the main loom so what I've done is I've marked it every one of my junction points uh, from the end of the pigtail uh, through the firewall connection and I've marked them all on the wires uh, just with a sharpie so I know how much loom to cut uh, you know where to tape my joints so that I'll have the proper length of my pigtails and I added about an inch or two to each one so that I'd rather each pigtail be a little long than a little short so that's where I'm at with this and I'm going to keep uh, keep looming it up. It's not a real interesting video, but I'll put some music to it and you guys can watch along. Um, if I can get this done here and get uh, all my soldering and heat shrinking done, then I'm going to get onto the battery cables. All that stuff arrived. I've got uh, some great, nice, heavy welding cable. Two gauge for the main uh, battery and four gauge for the alternator connections and our under dash connection. So, um... All that stuff came in. I've got good copper lugs to go on it, and I'm going to solder those up maybe later today, and I'll try and put this all together in one uh, one video. So I'm going to get back to
Hey guys, so just a midway update here. I'm still in the middle of wiring all this stuff up, but I wanted to point out uh, a couple things that you guys should uh, keep in mind if you're modifying a harness like this. Um, one of the most obvious things is don't cut any of your wires too short so that you can't uh, connect your plug to your sensor wire that's that's been cut down. Um, you know, I always start with the shortest ones first and work my way towards the the uh, ECM plugs. Um, that way I deal with the shortest ones first and the rest I just clip to length. Um, also, you know, it's fairly obvious to those of you that solder a lot, but every now and then you make a mistake. Always, uh, always put your heat shrink tube on the wire before you solder it so you don't have to cut the wire and then it's too short for your harness and you mess up your whole flow, you know. Um, clip all your uh, heat shrinks before you start. Just have a pile of them ready to go and slip that on before you strip your wires and put your wires together for soldering. Uh, put any wires that need to go outside of the loom uh, aside or mark them so that you don't forget. I, I forgot the uh, the distributor plug that you have to disconnect in order to set the timing on these TBI motors. Um, also your uh, your bushing or grommet that you're using to pass your wires through a firewall or a bulkhead or something make sure you put that on first before you start any of your putting your harness together because uh, once you start soldering you can't put the grommet on so I've already looked I've already put the grommet on and pushed it up out of the way uh, so that once everything's soldered I pull my pull my loom back into position and stretch it out and tape it with my cloth tape um, I'll have the timing wire on the outside of the loom and I'll have the grommet is already on here so then I can slip this through the firewall fish all these plugs through the firewall and reconnect everything and for the tools that you're seeing me use in the video like uh, the blue smart uh, wire strippers and the cloth loom tape and even the, the loom the red and black loom that I'm using I'll put links to all that in the description for any of you guys that might be interested in some of that So we have uh, a nice finished harness, you know, a uh, couple bucks of materials, and uh, I think it's going to look great in there. It's probably a little nicer looking than what you could buy out there uh, that's wrapped in convoluted tubing and whatnot. So um, we're going to pass this through, pass all these plugs through the firewall in the morning, uh, set my grommet into the firewall and we should be good. I moved the plug for the distributor the distributor timing plug up here near the two plugs for the ECM so whenever it comes time to adjust the timing you can reach in there and unplug this plug and set the timing. Connections up here I've got power going into uh, some of the sensors which is switch 12 volt that'll be uh, connected up here where my switch 12 volt connects to the ECM as well. I've got the battery constant power that needs to go to the ECM has to be connected. I've got uh, brake light switch, uh, air conditioning switch, cruise control switch sensors. Um, so those are additional inputs uh, that the computer will use. You know, this computer, the ECM, is no different than your home computer, you know, or any computer system. You give it input and you get output from the computer and you let the computer do the processing of the data, right? Well, that's the same thing that the ECM, the engine management computer does. It takes inputs from all of these sensors, from our water temperature sensor and from our oil pressure sensor and our knock sensor and uh, the distributor, the sensor, uh, the pickup, reluctor pickup in the, in the distributor, uh, the TPS, the throttle position sensor. Um, and it takes those inputs and it calculates a proper output and it'll send a signal to our idle air control which adjusts the idle speed for various conditions. It takes input from our cruise control uh, switch or air conditioning switch, um, brakes, brake light switch, and it takes the, those inputs and then adjusts your idle speed and sends a signal to the IAC, the idle air control. Um, it, it also takes those inputs uh, and, a, and sends an adjusted fuel signal to our fuel injectors. That's what these are. Um, so it, it's, it's much like any other computer system. And if you think about it that way, 
then the wiring isn't as, isn't as difficult to wrap your head around. You have inputs that have to be connected on the engine. You have outputs. There's a couple of, couple of outputs on the engine that have to be connected. And then you have outputs and inputs uh, from the driver controls in the dash that have to be connected. Um, and then the computer does the rest. So that's where I'm at with the wiring. Um, still a lot to go, but getting this chassis harness done was a big step. You know, I've got, I've got everything cleaned up ready to install and um, that's a big leap forward stuff. I'll build those uh, battery cables tomorrow as I uh, after I get this engine harness um, mounted back through the firewall and plugged into the ECM then I'm going to turn my attention to powering it so I need to get my power lines run from the battery. Um, I'm going to run a 4 gauge this, this is the 4 gauge uh, wire size here. I'm going to run 4 gauge from the battery to an under hood distribution or under dash distribution block so that I can power anything that needs power under the dash. I'm also going to run this from the starter uh, which is going to have a big two gauge lead from the battery and then I'm going to run four gauge from that up to the alternator and that'll be loomed as well. So everything's going to be covered and loomed and when you pop the hood uh, it's all going to be clean and um, hidden basically hidden in plain sight. So do it right the first time you plan, you take your time, you spend the time necessary to to do it right and you shouldn't have to readdress anything down the road. If you need to add things on you should have accounted for that in your plan which I've done. Um, thanks for watching. If, uh, if you like this kind of content and you like following along with this project please click like and subscribe and uh, tomorrow I'll have some more content for you guys.